Now, Goltz, alongside Monsignor John Perkington, who oversees six Nebraska Catholic high schools, both say they would love to take on more special education kids if they were given more state funding. They also both say they would like to see more data from the NSAA that proves that kids that are on free or reduced lunch programs don't do as well in sports. Well, eating insects may not sound like the most delicious meal you can have with the growing world population and food sustainability issues on the rise. A Lincoln company that creates insect-based foods right here on UNL's innovation campus is also on the rise. Bug Eater Foods that, yes, creates protein powder with crickets in it just received a big grant from the USDA. That's money that's going to allow the company to create different food products and also really allow the startup to take off. Every single pew in Sacred Heart Catholic Church was filled today as friends and family mourn the loss of Joe Blaha. Even former head coach of Nebraska, Tom Osborne, is here along with other former Husker greats. Now, Joe is obviously a very, very accomplished football player. He was a part of two national championships for Nebraska. He was a first-team all-conference player before going to the NFL. As accomplished as he was in the football field, after talking to friends and family at the reception luncheon earlier today, it's very, very apparent he was even a better man. So for now, the district is forced to play the waiting game. They're going to maintain the field for around $1,000 per year and do a few things to limit their liability such as get rid of these old concrete bleachers, this dilapidated press box, and they're going to move the goalposts from here over to Humboldt. Edmondson has reached out to Senator Deb Fisher's office as well as the National Park Service. She keeps getting a familiar answer, though, that in order for anything to happen, Congress will need to pass a law. On nice days during the upcoming winter, golfers in Nebraska City likely will not have the chance to hop in a golf cart and come play nine holes out at Wildwood Golf Course due to budgeting constraints. Now, none of this is ideal, but it is certainly necessary. Around 10 p.m. on Saturday night, three Peru State athletes on the street right behind me were stabbed. Now, today, the Nebraska State Patrol, alongside the Nemaha County Sheriff's Department, announced an arrest in the case. 24-year-old Peru State basketball player Jeff Land Neverson was arrested for first-degree assault as well as use of a weapon to commit a felony. Now, details are still murky in exactly what happened, but I was able to talk to a neighbor who lives a couple houses down and saw a lot what preceded the stabbing. He says, doesn't appear that it was a drunken fight at a party. Instead, it appears like it might have been a planned attack. In July of this year, head coach of the Prue State volleyball team, Nathan Baker, abruptly quit, leaving a very talented Bobcat volleyball squad without a head coach. Now, fortunately for the team, they are a specially tight-knit group, and therefore, they are off to the hottest start in over a decade. Really, this total solar eclipse was something that brought a lot of people together from different walks of life. It also allowed astronomers to put together some missing pieces. As you probably know, solar eclipses are incredibly rare. Therefore, when they happen, scientists really focus on making sure they can get as much data as possible to learn more about the sun. And when they know more about the sun, they know more about all the stars and all of space. Now, I'm gonna go check out the eclipse while I still can. So I'll see you guys later. Reporting in Stapleton for News Channel Nebraska, I'm John Kipper. Now this is not just unique to Fall City. Nearby St. Joseph, Missouri, which is about 17 times larger than Fall City, is already telling residents to grab food, gas, and medicine before the tourists come to town. And as more tourists come to town, comes other problems.